Welcome back to Dave's Gone By on this Sunday, May 21st, 2006, just a few days after the announcement of the Tony Award nominations, the 60th annual Tony Awards for Excellence on Broadway. And I uh, figured, you know, I, I generally have people on the show who are theater critics or theater experts, and several have been on many times, but I've got a new person here, a new visitor to the neighborhood, thought it would be fun to talk to the co-host of Theater Talk, which is a, a theater not so much a review program, but an interview program that has been airing on public television, I think, for almost a decade now. Ten years. Ten years. It is a decade. You're a grab bag of theater information. There you go. Yep. And the, the voice that you're hearing is that of Susan Haskins. And uh, I'm sure you've seen the show on PBS. It's on kind of late, usually either midnight or about 1230. 1230. 1230 on Friday. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll let you do the intro. Why don't you tell us all about... Well, yes, it shows uh, um, PBS, Channel 13 in the New York City area, 1230, unless you know, there's some cultural event that bumps us to one. And then the show is repeated on CUNY TV in New York. Uh, on weekends, on on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, five times. Consult your local listings. There you go. Consult your local listings. And we're on WGBH Boston. Are you in Boston? Um, well, if you're on the internet, I'm it's everywhere. Podcast, so. right? There you, well, by the way, if um, Susan mentions we when she talks about the show, that other person is named Michael Regal, and he was on our show ooh, a couple of months back talking about his career because he writes also for the New York Post. He has a bi-weekly column. Um, but Susan actually and, and Michael have been doing their TV show, as she says, for about 10 years. Was it your idea? Was it his no, idea? No, you, uh, we agree with our mutual idea. We met on, actually, we met on the Stephen Holt show, a very, uh, a, a, a cult cable show which still exists and thrives on public access. And we met on that show uh, for 13 years ago and decided to cook up a Meet the Press of Theater. And really, sort of, the two of us had the same idea and uh, got it going. And we were on public access for three years and then took it to PBS. Just to give people some idea, who are some of the people, the guests, that you've had on the show? Well, for instance, uh, uh, this past Friday and next weekend on Kennedy TV, we have Patty Lapone and Michael Cerveris of uh, Sweeney Todd. Um, today we just interviewed Richard Griffiths of the History Boys and Bob Martin from the Drowsy Chaperone. We had playwright Alan Bennett, uh, who wrote the History Boys several weeks ago. We had playwright David Hare, who wrote the uh, very powerful stuff happens about the war in Iraq. Um, we just have, we like to bring people from all different creative disciplines on the show. We have producers, we have designers, we have a lot of writers. And, and you've had some pretty major legends as well. Yes, yes. Soon we're going to have Eric Bentley. Nice. Over the, the eminent critic, over 90 years old, and he's going to talk about Brecht. So we sort of run the gamut from Antonio Banderas to. Uh, well, to Eric Bentley. To Eric Bentley. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of running the gamut, let's go over some of the big categories of the Tonys this year. Um, first of all, any big shocks for you? Any real surprises that you were like, oh my gosh? The biggest shock was in the Best Actress in a Play category. There had been much talk of would Julie Roberts make the cut or not. And uh, I had been very disturbed by a ruling by the Tony Committee, which has great power over what's going to happen in the nominations. And sometimes uh, it, it seems to be very political, the decisions they make. They had ruled Zoe Wanamaker, the wonderful actress who plays what is, uh, without question, the leading role in the revival of Clifford Odette's Awake and Sing. They had ruled her a supporting actress. Hmm. And yeah, it is a lead role, and, definitely. And, and the excuse that was given by by the Tony Committee was that when Awaken Sing first ran, which I believe was in 1936, um, was in 35, that the uh, a group theater had been um, a communal theater company, and nobody was above anybody else, and therefore, because that was the intention then, that Zoe Wanamaker should not be singled out as a leading actress. Now. Oh, I know about that. So she was knocked out of the category. And then the belief was, well, maybe this was a way that to get Julia Roberts a nomination for her lackluster, but not as horrible as many people said, performance in Three Days of Rain. So, but that's not what they did. They no. nominated Lynn Redgrave for Who's... a play that was done at the roundabout last spring, a very slight 
entire role play by Somerset Maugham. Not, not uh, you, the Somerset Maugham fans. This is not one of his better works. You know, he was uh, phoning this one in. And I know I have. We have so many Somerset Maugham fans listening well, right now. Yeah, but, but you know, the, he did some fabulous stuff, but not this play. And it was this, uh, this, this kind of dopey play about marriage mores of the late 19th century or whatever. And and Lynn Redgrave played the old Bezoar mother, who was a very supporting role. So your Lynn Redgrave parts of being earnest type performance. But because her name was above the title, they said, aha, well, she's a leading actress. And then they nominated her as best uh, uh, leading actress candidate. And that just struck me as a very, you know, a decision which which said the theater really is dead. They, they, mm. the, the Tony nominators didn't want to nominate Julia Roberts, so they showed everybody and went and got and nominated this supporting antediluvian performances. You know, the overbearing mother in this was this yeah. you know, comedy of manners. And uh, to me, it just. It, that was the biggest shock. Well, I mean, I'm with you halfway on that in the sense that uh, the Red Grave wasn't an amazing or great performance, no. but she was better than... I, I would not have given Julia Roberts a, a Best Actress. No, but the, I think that came from, from the Zoe Wanamaker thing. And also, uh, Cherry Jones had been submitted in the in the supporting category, although she had just as much to do as the two other people, as, as, as Ray Fiennes. But that was some kind of decision made by producers to to submit her as supporting for the faith healer. And she did, she did a wonderful job, I thought. So it's kind of, you're playing games with who's a lead and who's not. Right. And Actually, she decided, didn't get a nomination, by the way. She was not. No, no right. right. And, and, and this was decided, this is decided by committees of producers, not by the nominators themselves, who's even eligible. And so sometimes people who were clearly supporting become eligible as leads, and people who are clearly leads are not eligible. And uh, it, it's it's frustrating because then the the performances of most merit don't get recognized. And Dave Lefkowitz is here for the play by play, the play by play by play by Dave in his book of plays, Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World, comedies, satirical, silly, sad, and strange, all collected in a great looking book. Just twenty dollars hardcover, twelve dollars soft. Email Dave's Gone By at AOL.com or visit Dave's Gone By.org for marriage, babies, and the end of the world. Da 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 da! Play Dave! This is Susan Haskins from Theater Talk, and you're listening to Dave's Gone By on WGBB. We are talking with Susan Haskins on Dave's Gone By. She's the co host of Theater and Talk. And the executive producer. And, excuse me, and the well, executive producer. Yes. How did you, by the way, get into theater to begin with? Just always. When I was one of those kids who always wanted to be in theater, so went along and did all kinds of things, and I was in casting and all kinds of things. But I was kind of bored with what I was doing and uh, when I ran across Michael Riedel uh, and we cooked up this TV show that just seemed like a great idea so when I was able to make a real job of it when we got on PBS I jumped at the chance Is it your full time gig? Uh, I'm also a teacher Oh cool As Sean Malakam said if I were a rich man I'd be richer than a rich man because I teach and so I, I actually teach at Pratt Institute I teach college Do you teach drama or English? Or? I teach English Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get to the actual categories, like yes. some of the major categories. Um, leading actor in a play. You've got Ray Fiennes from Faith Healer going against Richard Griffiths of the History Boys. Zelchko Ivanik, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from the just-closed King Mutiny. Captain Quig, right. Right, Oliver Platt in Shining City, and David Wilmot in uh, Lieutenant of Ashmore. <laughs> I don't know which part he played. Oh, he Did was the crazy... The he, yeah, he Did was the crazy guy. The Catman? So, now, uh, are you asking me who I think should win? Yeah. Well, I must say I'm a sucker for Griffith's performance um, in The History Boys. Just a wonderful, special performance. Um, Do you think he'll get the... uh... I think he'll get it. Um, In in Shining City, I was sorry not to see Brian O'Byrne nominated, who gave a much subtler performance, but I actually preferred him uh, to Oliver Platt, although Platt did, did a good job. Ivanic, of course, doesn't have a chance that... that now that the show is... And, and yeah. Oh, Ray Fiennes. Um, a very interesting performance, but it, it doesn't top Griffith. 
Okay. And going back to actors, well, we, we sort of talked about this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Kate Burton, Constant Wife, versus Lynn Redgrave and Constant Wife. Judy Kay, Souvenir, Lisa Kron in Well, that's, that came out of left field, and Cynthia Nixon for Rabbit Hole. I think this is going to be a lot for Cynthia Nixon. Yeah. I, I, I think her notoriety in, in the rabbit hole, uh, that she'll get it. Um, she was really good, but do you think she should be Judy Kay? Well, I love Judy Kay. I absolutely love Judy Kay, but I just don't think that Judy Kay has a chance. That's a show that closed quite a long time ago, and um, uh, it had mixed. I, I was quite fond of it, but uh, many people weren't that crazy about it, and I just don't think. As, as much deserved as her nomination is, I don't think she's going to beat Cynthia Nixon, who's, although Rabbit Hole's also close, but is, uh, who's known so well. I just think that that performance as the mother, the bereaved mother who's, who's lost her child, is, is, is uh, oh, that was a very good play, more dramatic I than uh, Case, which is almost, a, Judy Case was almost a musical performance. She was, a, she played the actress Florence Foster, no, not the, she played the singer Florence Foster Jenkins, who couldn't sing on tune. Right. And it was just lovely. Uh, but again, I, I think that Nixon's going to get it no matter what. Yeah, and I, and I think that was really more of a musical than a play, come That's to right. think of it. That's right. So, all right, let's get to the revivals of, uh, of shows. The big revivals of a musical were Pajama Game, Sweeney Todd, and Three Penny Opera. Only right. three in the category. Right. That was it. Your thoughts? Well, uh, the, the horse race is between Pajama Game and Sweeney Todd. The Three Penny Opera, although I suppose well intended, was awful. And uh, agreed. You know, <laughs> and um, I think it'll go to Sweeney Todd because it's a far more innovative production. The Pajama Game is fun and wonderful, but it's it's it is that you know a, a well mounted revival. Whereas uh, Sweeney Todd's completely rethought and just uh, very exciting in what they're doing. So it sounds like that's what you would vote for also. Yes, not, not I would vote for it, and I believe it will win. Cool. And as far as a play goes, you've got Awake and Sing, mm-hmm. The Constant Wife, Edward Albee's Seascape, and Faith Healer. I think Awake and Sing. Yeah, that seems to be the, the strong one I here. I do. And, you know, and Awake, you know, isn't this the 100th the Centennial Clifford Odets or something like that? Well, I mean, it, it shouldn't figure into that, but okay. But, but, um, in sitting in Awake and Sing, I thought, oh, wow, this is what it was like to see plays in the old days. It just re- reminded you of the power of a certain kind of theater. And uh, audiences really took to it. Um, so, you know, I've already discussed The Constant Wife. Um, Faith Healer is very interesting, but I think it's, a, it's three monologues which tell a story which kind of never is resolved. And I think a lot of people don't mm, totally know what to make of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I love three powerful performances, but uh, I think that the Wake of Thing, which is this wonderful ensemble production, I was surprised. I want to say that Ben Gazzara did not get a nomination for Wake and Thing. Not everybody liked him, really? and he was kind of hard to understand. A lot of the critics apparently didn't know that he had had, I think, throat cancer or something like that, and that oh. he had trouble speaking. So well, he was just such a moving performer. I thought he was very, very good. Yeah. Well, I, I, I that that was. That was the person I certainly had. I, been a Tony nominator, would have wanted to include. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I didn't even, I, you know, I didn't even notice the vocal problem. I just thought he's old. And gruff and gravelly. No, that's yeah, the way he talks. Yeah, he's but got, there were moments that yeah. he just, he, he, he's, he's such a powerful actor. There was some moment of, uh, some, some tragic moment there with this poor family, and he just looked out at the audience and yeah. a tear in his eye and, and just riveting acting. Yeah, and I, and I thought it was a really good revival. I do think that Awakening Sing has it over something like Kane Mutiny in the sense that we don't know it as well. Ah, that's a very good point. Whereas it, the problem with the Kane Mutiny, I, I don't know quite how, why they took that on because it, it's so hard to beat the movie on that one. Right, you got Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, you know, those iconic thing, you know. performances, and uh, they had a very tough, tough challenge, and unfortunately they couldn't quite meet it. Yeah, I mean, they thought it would be relevant because of Iraq, and, and it sort of was, but... Well, someone uh, said to me today, today, Clive Barnes, he said, I think it's relevant in the red state. <laughs> Interesting. Well put. Um, okay, let's get to the biggies. The big boys. Best okay. new... Well, I'm putting in the word new in quotes. Best musical, The Color Purple, The Drowsy Chaperone, Jersey Boys, and The Wedding Singer. Mm-hmm. Well, it's between... Jersey Boys and the Drowsy Chaperone. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think that uh, the, either the Wedding Singer or Color Purple have a chance. Um, 
Hopefully not. I, 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 I love Jersey Boys, and I was all for it. And then along came the Drowsy Chaperone, which I absolutely adore. Cool. Uh, I, 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 I think, you know, I'd actually, I hope I can see Jersey Boys again, um, because I'm, you know, like them both. Now, you know, uh, in the, with the Tony votes, there's this all-important road voters, the people who control the touring companies, and they come in, and they are they vote, and they're, um, they're a very strong block of voters, and they, use, they vote for things that are viable on the road. Mm -hmm. And I think that Jersey Boys probably is more viable on the road than the Drowsy Chaperone, because the thing about the Drowsy Chaperone, which is a very fun and, and but also moving uh, piece about the, the love of theater and, and this man reflecting on his favorite musical. Uh, this star Bob Martin, there aren't very many of him, and I don't know how viable it is on the road because he's only got one of him. Right. Well, you know, I think it could work possibly the other way in the sense that Jersey Boys is a lock to tour mm -hmm. no matter what. I mean, you know that thing can tour everywhere. That's right. Whereas Drowsy Chaperone might need... To, to go to places and say, hey, we won the Tony. We won the to no, Take they us. need it. They need it. The, the Tony more than Jersey Boys. So maybe the, the block of, pe of folks who are voting from all these regional and, and touring houses will keep that in mind, and yeah. they'll throw their vote to Drowsy Chaperone instead of Jersey Boys. Well, I hope you're right, because I, the, both of those shows should thrive, but the Drowsy Chaperone, which just came out of nowhere. It didn't it? Yeah. And out it's of delightful. nowhere. It's so wonderful, and I just recommend it to everybody to go see it. It is it's just, a, I was just, had a big smile on my face the entire time. It was, it was on, I was over the moon with joy. What can I say? Okay, we've got our last category here. Best play. Yes. Alan Bennett's History Boys, Martin McDonough's The Lieutenant of Inishmore, David Lindsay of Ayer's Rabbit Hole, and Colin McPherson's Shining City. It's funny how they nominated um, Lisa Krong for Will, which was a bizarre acting thing, but, but didn't give her play. Well, I, I, I didn't like to play much. But. I didn't think, yeah, that was the thing. I, the, the, the big omission there was Primo. Mm. Uh, by Anthony Cher about the Primo Levy uh, in, the, in the Auschwitz, wasn't he, in the concentration camp, which was one of the most powerful things I've ever seen on the stage. And although it was last summer, I thought it was very uh, regrettable that that play was not included. I in bet the they category. were thinking of putting that in, like, one of those special categories, yeah, except they didn't have one this year. Yeah, but again, the Tony Committee ruled it a play and not a special category. I, but, but that's what I thought, that Primo should have gone in a special category instead of just handing it to Sarah Jones, which was all very well and good. It would have been smarter to put Chia Rivera mm. and uh, Primo in that category. But Primo was a play, and I think it should have been one of the four nominees. Uh, that being said, I think this will definitely go to the History Boys. And are you happy with that? Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, um, that's, I think that's a fine decision. I, I, I very much liked uh, Shining City. I thought the Lieutenant of Inishmore was a lot of fun, but uh, I think the History Boys is the one with the uh, the sexiest, so to speak. It's, and it's a, a, a very strong play. Plus, it's a snob British hit, and yeah. um, I think that's definitely going to win. Well, let me ask you, before I let you go, Susan Haskins of Theatre Talk, what are you looking forward to on or off-Broadway this coming season? You know, David... <laughs> <laughs> Too early to even talk I about it, right? the slightest idea. I just take things as they come at me, and I'm, 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 you know, so, I'm so busy making, you know, this week's Theatre Talk and next week's Theatre Talk that I have the slightest idea what's coming in, quite honestly. What are you looking the most forward to. Oh, gosh, I'm not even thinking of... Well, I'm kind of looking forward to Chorus Line, although I still remember it pretty well. You know, I am not. Oh, I think wow. That the, I think that was then, and this is now, and I... I you know, it, 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 it turns out they make it work. That's fabulous, but I, I just don't see that being... Mm. I just don't see that, that being successful. And what about South Pacific? I'm not sure if that's next... Oh, no, are they doing South Pacific? Well, it's either going to be next... This coming season or the season after, but they're it's finally doing it. And I've never seen it done. But so. who's going to be in it, you know? Oh, I don't know if they've even cast it yet. Oh, if they're yeah, smart, they'll get Brian Stokes Mitchell like, like they did in that concert. Well, well South Pacific is a wonderful, wonderful show. All power to them. I, I, I would, if the South Pacific's coming, I'm, I'm much more enchanted <laughs> by the uh, prospect of that than seeing a chorus line again. I so, think the chorus line was dealing with a lot of issues now that 
will seem dated to us, and whereas the, the issues in South Pacific are eternal. Well, I mean, if, if what happened to a class act is any uh, indication, I mean, I love that musical, and just nobody came to it. No, no. And, and so hopefully that won't be a sign. But we shall see. We, we shall see. see. And who are some of the upcoming guests, or can you say yet, on, on Theater Talk? Well, next week, we, uh, this coming Friday, we have a, a great show with it. Richard Griffiths from His The History Boys and mm-hmm. Bob Martin from The Drowsy Chaperone. Right. And my big favorite. And then the following week, we have our Tony Prediction show, and then we are going to have John Lahr come on and talk about, the following week after that, John Lahr will come and talk about Awake and Sing. Cool. And, uh, and on and on and on. Well, I don't know. Uh, on to your 11th year on Theater Talk. On to our 11th year. 1230 in the morning on Friday. No, it's Friday early Friday, morning. Friday, Saturday. That makes oh. it Saturday morning. Saturday early morning on your PBS station. 1230 on Channel 13. Or if you're in uh, New York City, catch up with it on CUNY TV on weekends. And also, we are streaming 24 hours a day on the Internet. Wow. So you can now watch uh, most of our episodes if you go to www.theatertalker. Org. Theater Talk, that's theater with an ER. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always say that for, for uh, Total Theater, which is a producer of this show. So it's also Theater yeah. Talk with an ER. Yeah. For Susan Haskins, Michael Regal, and uh, thanks, Susan, so much for giving us your picks and predictions Thank for the Tonys. Have a Bye-bye. great one.